So today on the bench we have the Dan Electro Hash Browns flanger and it the light turns on and off and we have our amp set up right now. Let's take the reverb off. And there's no uh, flanger effect with this one. I have all of these are all the way up. We're getting absolutely no flanger out of it. So we're going to open it up. We're going to see what's going on. And just hot off the rubber here, I can see that there's a little bit of a, a soldering thing going on with this zero ohm resistor. Um, there, there's something else under there that this is soldered to. And it doesn't seem like it's soldered all the way. So I'm going to fix that. But other than that, there's not really much on here that I can see that um, would be causing a problem. So what I think I'll do is I'll take these screws out and I'll also look underneath there and, and uh, we'll see what we can find underneath too. Okay, so it seems like here we have a ribbon cable, and uh, that seems to be going to a, a, like, basically like a main board underneath it. So the first thing I want to do is actually test the continuity of this ribbon cable, because sometimes that can have an effect on um, the operation. So we're going to do that as well. But I do kind of want to get a, uh, an up-close look at this board down here, and I want to see how, like, the... Uh, everything is soldered on on there as well. So I'm going to bring the camera down and I'm going to give you a uh, up close look at what's going on. So looking at this baseboard here, uh, it looks like this resistor here is soldered at an angle and that that's not common. That's not commonly done. So um, that's just interesting to know. Let's see, we've got some other things here. It's, it looks like, I don't know, it looks like there could be some soldering mistakes in here but we're also going to take this board out and I already tested the continuity of this ribbon cable here and these all seem to be fine from here to up here on this daughter board here um, so we're going to take this board out and we're going to see what's on the other side um, I'm curious to see what we find on there alright so here is the other side of this board um, it looks like our ICs that we're working with are a CD3102 and a, let's see what this is, a CD3207. 3207 is our BBD, and the 3102 is a clock generator for that BBD. So um, I'm thinking that we're going to uh, plug it in and see if it works first off, because so far um, what we did was all we've done was um, test continuity, and we resoldered some of the solder on this side. So we're going to plug it in, we're going to see if we can get a sound out of it, and if we can't, then we're going to start probing around these BBD chips, um, seeing if we're getting a clock signal or anything else out of there. Alright, so I plugged it in again, um, our LED is still working on and off there, but uh, it does seem like we still do not get any flanger out of it. I did set all these to their, uh, their middle values so that's all good so now I think the next step here is just go directly to these chips here and see if we were getting any of the uh, expected signals hi so I had to do some digging on this CD3207 uh, chip and it's really not that popular there are um, MN3207s and so here's an MN3207 there's even a V3207 which is the cool audio version of this chip here um, a pin for pin replacement for it um, so we're going to go with this. We're going to assume that it's this type of layout, hopefully, and um, we'll see where we go from there. So the MN3207 is a 1024 stage, low voltage operation, low noise BBD. Um, here are Here is the pinout. It's, uh, so we're, we are concerned with pin 2 and 6. These are the clock generation 
uh, pins or these is these are this is where the clock pulses are going to be so it's where we're going to have to test out on the 3102 this is a CMOS clock generator slash driver for low voltage operation um, this is the thing that generates those clock voltages or clock signals rather here's the clock driver in this uh, in this depiction here block diagram we'll blow that up for you guys so this is the clock driver um, and CP1 and CP2 are our clock pulse signals on pin 2 and 4. Alright, so first we're going to test the 3207 and those are pins 2 and 6 that should have it. So here is pin 2, here's pin 2 and it seems like that's just fine and pin 6 is on this side and that is okay too. So our clock is working and our BBD is receiving those clock signals. I have my signal generator here um, going into our, what is this, a hash browns uh, flanger. And then the neuron over here is a um, audio probe. So I can just poke around and see where the signal is. And so what I did just now is I think on one of these ribbon cables over here, uh, I was able to I was able to pick up the signal. So if you just bear with me on this, it's going to be a little loud. All right. and I'm just going to ground it through me. Um, and then what we're going to do is pick one of these. And here is the orange cable over here. And you can hear it. It's flanging. That's it. That's the sound. And you can um, change the speed over here I'll bring it down a little bit and and there's the speed or at least there's the signal at a lower lower rate so we are getting a signal it is coming from this board and it's getting to this daughter board over here so we just need to figure out what's going on on this lower board and then we'll be able to see if we can fix it alright so I think I figured out what's going on um, it seems like our affected signal uh, should be reaching this pin 4, this Z over here, 3Z. Um, and so here's our affected signal, and we're going to make it like different waveforms because it's kind of like what a flange type of looks like. And uh, it's supposed to be making it to pin 4 over here, but somewhere over here it, it's dropping out, and we're only getting a, a flat line, no sound, um, coming to pin 4. So that's probably going to end up just getting fixed with a little jumper cable and we'll see if that uh, fixes our problem. It seems like it is so far when I push down one of the solder uh, uh, points on there it seems like it's reaching it but other times it's not so it just seems like that solder point is there but I'd rather just kind of you know put in a little jumper there so that seems to be the problem um, but I want to take this opportunity to kind of go over the chip that is being used to route that signal to where it needs to go and that chip is the 4053. You'll see this sometimes in the uh, in the forums every so often. But um, the 4053, if we bring up the the data sheet, um, it is if we go up there, it is a triple, single pole, double throw, analog switch. Well, gee, that sounds familiar, right? A single pole, double throw, analog switch. Hmm. Hmm. What does that mean? That means that there are. Let's see. There's one thing here one thing here so it's a triple and then there's a single pull right single pull double throw so what does that mean that means that we have a switch that looks like this right single pull double throw it can go two ways right and you have an output over here in this case um, this this part is called the Z and this part over here is called Y0 for example and this part over here is called Y1. Forgive my handwriting. This is my first time using this this pen thing that I got. So we have the Z over here, and it can go either way. And there are three of these. So that kind of looks like your 3PDT. This is being used to simulate that whole 3PDT switch and uh, to to figure out which way that this this uh, lever, I guess, is turned. Um, you actually you use these select inputs to. Um, to basically tell this chip you know which ones you want on or which ones you want off so there are three of them one of them for each of these switches here um, if you want to go into the details and believe me I love details 
um, we're going to go down and look at what this switch looks like in the data sheet over here. So here's a logic diagram off to the right and this this allows you to get a better sense of what's going on. We have three select signals over here, S1, S2, and S3, and over here we have three blocks, three blocks of that, that correspond to the poles or the lugs, I guess, of our switch. One Z, here's one, and uh, whoop, and you can get, here's the thing over here, and then up here we have one Y zero and uh, one Y one, and it can go either way like that. So anyway, that's what that is. And uh, this, this enable over here is very common. There we go. I don't know. Okay. Uh, this enable over here is very common. Um, this just enables a chip. So this always stays at, I believe it stays at one. And if it's not one, then this chip doesn't work. So that's, that's what that is. If we go off to the left over here, we see that here is, um, a funny symbol that we don't really see that often. So other, uh, these other symbols over here are pretty, pretty common in here. So these are logic symbols. This is a not. So this turns, if there's a zero over here, it turns it into a one. And this over here is a nor. So if these two inputs are different, it becomes a one. But if they're the same, we have two zeros over here, then we get a zero. Or if we have two ones over here, then we also get a zero. So they have to be different in order for this to be to be um, uh, one. And then over here is a funny looking symbol. And that's just a multiplexer switch. Now, what is that? So we're gonna go down and here is what this switch looks like in terms of transistors. So, um, if we go through here, right, and this this is basically this thing up here. So if we look at from decoder enable logic, uh, that's actually this decoder enable. You know, these select pins are basically your decoder um, signals, and uh, this nor is this nor up here, and this not is this not up here. So all they've done, and this they're only looking at basically this part of this circuit up here. Okay, so don't don't be uh, tricked into thinking that this is more complicated. This over here is this component in transistor form. So let's see what happens when the output of this NOR is one. So when this output is one, what happens? Well, this NOT gate is going to turn that one into a zero, and this zero is going to close off this transistor going to VEE -E, and it's going to close off this transistor and what else is going to close off this one over here okay so those are all not open however uh, this one over here is going to creep up and go over here and so what happens here let's see this input signal or whatever signal this is goes into here and it's redundant, right? It goes through both of these to the other side. But guess what? It also goes over here. It goes to your output. Okay, so that is that is uh, a one. So when you get a one, we get what do we get? We get a connection, right? Between this thing and this thing. Okay, now. Uh, if we get a zero when this comes out, this turns into a one, okay? And this zero creeps up, creeps up over here, and this is taken out, and this is taken out, so they're not open, um, and that's it. And when this one comes up, this shunts, and this shunts, so we get a connection there. And what else? And this shunts as well. So what does that mean? That means that our input signal goes into here, and yes, we do get a connection still, right? But that connection is also, if we go all the way over here, that connection is grounded. VEE -E is ground in this circuit. So um, if you get a zero over here, it gets grounded, and if not, it gets away. So that's just like the, the, the low level logic that's going on in here. Um, and it's just kind of confusing sometimes when you go through here and um, you know you see symbols like this I just wanted to kind of clarify what those are in case you ever saw them um, So anyway, this is uh, that is the overview of the 4053 uh, Let's go fix the flanger and see if uh, 
if the fix does anything. Okay, so here's what we ended up doing. We ended up putting a, a solder, we ended up putting a little jumper wire on. It probably could have been done a little better. But um, here is where we found the effect signal coming from. And this is the orange wire, I believe, that's on the other side there. So here's the orange wire, and then here's a zero ohm resistor. On the other side of this board, there's a capacitor, an electrolytic, that takes it from here to there. And this is where we're tapping from. You see this trace right here, this green chase going down underneath this resistor and into what is supposed to be pin 4. Um, it was showing up where we have our jumper wire here, but it wasn't showing up there. And so we pushed this down and we were able to get some signal out of it, but um, you know we weren't able to, to fix it with just like a solder reflow or something like that. So what we ended up doing was putting this jumper wire in. It works now, so let me just turn on my amplifier. We can hear the affected signal get through just fine. So that was the fix. Jumper wire was the fix. Nice. Thank you.